Really round of applause, hallelujah. Woo. That you woke up this morning and you're able to lift up your hands and stretch your legs and move your body around. It's a miracle. Amen. Many of you know that. It's what? Yes. So if you appreciate God for that miracle, come on, give him a round of applause and a shout. If you want to shout, go ahead and give him a shout of praise. Whatever we have, it was given. John said, for no man has anything except that that he received. It was given. Life is given to us. And it's a gift. And listen to me, if God gave you this life, he has a plan for you this year. Amen. If you are breathing this morning without the support of any gadget or equipment, are you listening to me, somebody? Forget about your worries. Oh, there's something I want God to do to, for me this year, this month. I just, need it. I just need it badly. Don't need it badly as much as you need to appreciate the life he's given to you. If you have this life, beautiful things are coming your way. Amen. If your amen is louder. Amen. Now, I want you to especially on my behalf, shake the person beside you and say, you are looking great this morning. <laughs> say, neighbor, you are looking fantastic. You are looking pepistic. <laughs> you are looking caucastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are looking bogastic. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Father, we ask, oh God, that you help us this morning. That every man and every woman who has come before your presence will not leave this place without their blessings. Amen. You pour out your blessings upon all flesh this morning. Amen. To that man, to that woman that is saying the loudest, amen, pour your blessing upon them. Amen. And let your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' awesome name we pray. Amen. A louder, amen. amen. Please, if the Lord is leading you into the music ministry, you know you have the gift of singing or you have the gift or the ability to play drums or, or you know someone who can help us out with drums and drums and keyboard, you know, please let us know after the service. We covet all manners of gift of men. This church is just a, a month and some days old. And I think God is faithful to us. Amen. Um, the Lord said to me, towards the end of the year, while I was waiting on him for direction for this year, clearly, like I said at the crossover night, for those of us who were privileged to be able to come, and for those, those of us who were not here on, at the crossover night, I want to take it again. He said to me, this year, it's our year of settlement. Yeah. I told somebody, this email will be louder. Yeah. He said, Israel, I will settle everything around your life and ministry. Now, when he's talking to me, when God is speaking to me, it's not just a specific word to me, but to the church. When the Lord sent a letter to the angel of the church in the book of Revelation, the letter got to the angel of the church, but it was meant for the church. So I took the delivery of that prophetic word on, on your behalf. Amen. And I've come to declare today is the first Sunday, January 2015. Take delivery of your settlement. Amen. Financial settlement. Amen. Marital settlement. Amen. Academic settlement. Amen. Social settlement. Amen. Settlement in your in the areas of your business amen. and the works of your hands. Amen. If you say the loudest, amen. amen. 
Now, quickly before we take the impartation, I just want to show you a scripture. We function by revelation of the word of God. Now, listen to me. Whatever we prophesy to you by divine revelation is good, but it's not as powerful as what the word of God asked me to prophesy to you from his word. Because his word is forever settled. So, when we say prophecy, it's not only to tell you about your situations, or to tell you your way of escape, but the prophecy also is declaring for the word of God in power. Now, when prophetic word is released, as the word of God is being taught, and you respond to it by saying a good amen, you are taking the delivery of that proof already. And that's that works in the prophetic. And then, I have seen dangerous issues being terminated and damaged at the proclamation of a prophetic word. Amen. Dangerous, deadly issues of life being destroyed at the announcement of the word of God. Amen. It says, at the, at, at they shall hear my voice from their hidden places and they shall run out. So when the word of God is coming for demons are not supposed to remain. Devils cannot stand the word of God. So as we speak this morning, take delivery of your settlement. If your amen is loud, receive it right now. In the name of Jesus, take delivery of your healing. Take delivery of your prosperity. Take delivery of your increase. Take delivery of your progress. If you are the one standing up, say, I receive it. Hallelujah. Now, how will this year become beautiful and colorful for you is what I want to talk to you about this morning, surely, and then we shall drop the oil of impartation. And I'll be speaking on what I call, I need a, a seed. Someone say, I need a seed. Say it again. Say it one more time. Say it aloud. Say, Lord, I need a seed. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 8. If there are fast readers, good. If you are faster than me, good. Genesis chapter 8. Because we have to do it fast now. There are so much engagement this afternoon. And we still have evening service tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The revelation God gave me is that 24 7 days are coming here in this ministry. The door shall never be locked, it shall be a theater room. Amen. Where if you, if you drop a dead man here and go, by the time you are coming back, the dead man is sitting waiting for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. get ready for a unique and strange encounters like you've never seen before. Amen. This is the year of one delivery. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Are we here now? Yes. Awesome, God. Can I read? Yes, if you are there. Where the earth remained, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and the day and night shall not cease. Amen. As the head remained, is the earth still remaining now? Yes. Are we still on earth? Yes. Are we still on earth? Yes. Ask your neighbor, are you, are you really on earth? Who is speaking here? God. The creator of heaven and he said, while the earth remains, he didn't say while heaven remains. While this earth remains, Seed time and harvest, I will drop every other thing, shall not cease. 
while this earth remains, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. So where do we need seed to survive is on earth. Someone say, I need seed. You will not be seedless. Amen. If your amen is slather, you will not be seedless. Amen. Because to be seedless is to be fruitless. That's right. Mm -hmm. To be seedless is to be fruitless. In Genesis chapter 1, thank you, Jesus. In verse 28, we saw some dramatic words from God. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air. The fish of the sea, the mammy water, the spirit water, all the water goddess in the rivers. Have dominion over them. The birds of the air, the, the, one, the flying witchcraft, arrest them. Have dominion over anything that is flying over your roof. Every form of animal that can fly on the surface of the earth, they have dominion over them. The ones that are kept in the sea take authority over them. It's, and it is not there. It's a, even on the walking animals. And the walking animals is not limited to animals in the desert, the lions, the, the gorilla. No, it's also the human animals. You shall have dominion over all. Amen. If your amen, I say you shall have dominion over all. Amen. Say have dominion over all this. God bless them to pronounce order. And he says, subdue so it and have dominion over the fish of the seas and the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Over every living thing, including human beings. Over every living thing that moves on the surface of this earth. Somebody this 2015, you shall be in command of everything. Amen. If you're in, I say you shall be in command of everything. Amen. Every situation around your life, you shall be in command of it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you say the Lord has meant to believe you right now. Amen. But look at verse 29. He said, and God says, see. Do you see that? Yeah. God is calling somebody's attention this morning. See? And God says, see, I have given you every hair, hair that yields seed, which is on the face of all the heads and every tree, whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be food. I will stop there. So this head, <laughs> this material world we see today, function by seed. God bless them. Have dominion. Increase. Multiply. Subdue. Be fruitful. Then in 29, I said, the reason why all these things will happen to you is because I have given you seed. He said, see, for I have given you seed of every house that is on, on the surface of the earth. And of all the fruits of the earth, their seed is in their end. And I have given it to you. But you have to see it. What you don't see, you cannot take delivery of it. So I, I command your eyes to see your breakthrough this year. Ah, oh, somebody say that is sleeping. I command your eyes to see your increase this year. In the name of Jesus. He says, see, I have, after that he has blessed them. If he has blessed them and the blessing automatically has to function, why would he need to ask them to see it? God wants you to respond to what is available. There are breakthroughs around you, sir. Amen. You will see it. Amen. There are opportunities around you. Amen. This year, you will find them. Amen. If your amen is there, you will find them. Amen. If your amen is there, you will find them. Amen. If you are the one I'm talking to, your, your amen will swallow that of your neighbor. They see, I, I have given you seed. Why? Because God invented the seed. For the plant to be able to reproduce itself. Every plant, the ability to produce themselves, reproduce themselves, is in their seed. Mm. 
everything God created, He created them by the power of His spoken word, but He now put in them their seed after their kind. That's what we saw in verse 29. He created them, He just picked them out, but He planted in them their seed so that they can produce themselves after war. You remember when God was going to destroy the earth? He told Noah, He said, Take them in, male and female. He destroyed everything. But he said, Make sure every of the animals goes in, male. Why? So as to preserve their seed of their kind. So the destiny of every man is tied to his seed. For the, good, uh, for the donkey to produce its kind, it is tied to his seed. For the monkeys to produce after their kind, it is tied to their seed. For your prosperity to come out, it is tied to your seed. For your healing, it is tied to your seed. For you to have children, it is tied to your seed. You don't see a white man give birth to a black boy. That will be that there's a, a something, a, you know, a magic has happened. White man, white woman, born begin. <laughs> Do you understand Africa? A child is not picking where I came from. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't see a white man and his wife giving birth to a black child, except something has happened somewhere. They have to bring the child after their kind. You will bring after your kind. Listen to me, that's why your seed is very important. That's why your seed must be alive. If you must in, in, have a great harvest this year, then it's, it is tied to your seed. We saw that God's mandate is that we be fruitful, right? How many of you want to be fruitful this year? When we talk about fruitfulness, we're not talking about, you know, some of people have graduated from child bearing now. So we're not talking about child bearing. <laughs> Somebody said, no, no, I don't want that one. So we are not talking about just bearing children like that. We're talking about being fruitful means being fruitful in all of the senses. How many of you want to be fruitful this year? I shall be fruitful. Shall be say it one more time. Say, I shall be fruitful. Because my is that we should be fruitful, and he knows that the only way we can be fruitful is through our seed full. You cannot be fruitful until you are seed full. If you are not seed full, you cannot be fruitful. He bless them, be fruitful and multiply. Their ability to become fruitful and multiply is in their seed. Receive your blessing is not enough. To receive the blessing and for the blessing to be materialized is in your seed. Is somebody hearing me this morning? You shall be a great doctor. No, it is not in the prophecy. You have to read medicine. Right. <laughs> you can't be a carpenter to become a doctor. Is somebody hearing me this morning? You shall become fruitful this year. If you're I say you shall be fruitful. You shall multiply. Shout, I receive it. Are you ready for impartation now? Because I want you to understand the premise for which this oil is coming on you. Then you can function with it. So how then do you become fruitful and multiply? You must recognize your seed. You must know what your seed looks like. And you must learn to cultivate your seed. Number one, recognize your seed if you, must, if you desire great harvest this year. If you want your business to boom, to be great, recognize your seed. 
Discover your talent. Discover your ability. Discover what you can do. Discover places you need to go to. Discover who to talk to. There are seeds around you. The people God has put around you, they are seeds of life. Discover what they can offer you to become to be able to fulfill a better life. Don't fight everybody that is around you. They are seed of God. Are you listening to me? Don't look at your child and say, you, this child, I'm tired of you. Say, I'm tired. Your father left you and me. No, they are your seed for future. Ah, your seed shall grow. The father may leave you, but don't leave your children. Amen. They are your seed. They are your seed. When you grow old, they will be feeding you with your mom, grandma, grandma. You. And you know it's so sweet when, when children jump me and say, Grandma, grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are your seed. That's right, that's right. But before grandchildren will come, the seed, the, your children have to be alive to bring forth grandchildren. Right. Oh, yes. You have to preserve those seeds. Take them through proper schooling. Take them through good, good system. Let them know how to live well. Give them value for life. Live that kind of lifestyle, they will follow you. Amen. Life is a seed. Are you listening to me? Yes. Life is what? A seed. Recognize your seed. Then learn to cultivate them. If they are children, train them well. If it's business, do it well. If it's money, manage your money well. Manage your paycheck well. Stop eating everything as it comes. You know, when you pay your burger to dump, 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 five pies, or pepper, yeah, whatever, you go everywhere. You, you, this paycheck must finish immediately. The ticket must finish immediately. You say, by two weeks, I will get when I get it. You finish this one, you say, when, I, when the one comes, you are finishing before it came. Preserve your seed. That paycheck is a seed. Preserve it. So that you'll be able to turn your seed to harvest. Are you listening to me? Stop praying and binding the devil every day. Preserve your seed. The devil is preserving his own. Yes, mm -hmm. then, that's why he's spreading his demons everywhere. He's preserving his seed. Preserve your seed. Your God's given seed. Preserve them. Cultivate them. Know them. You need to know them to be able to cultivate. You need to cultivate them to be able to do or preserve them. Cultivate your ability. Train yourself in your job, in your place of work. Train yourself to be better. Don't stay where you stayed last year. Increase your knowledge for next year. Oh, somebody's not hearing me. That is your seed. Preserve, preserve, increase it. Cultivate it. Wake up your certificate. Wake up your paper and check it again. And say, what can I add to this one again? What decree do I need to become a better man? That's your seed. Are you listening to me? You have a good character. Preserve that seed of character. Don't let bad people change you to become bad. You say, I used to be good. But the way people are treating me, I change. Now, don't make people change you. You are the good one. Let your good change the bad people. Ah, are you hearing me this morning? Your seed shall grow. Seed time and other time shall not cease. Are we? So if, if it is what you have as a seed, that God will keep with you to make life meaningful for you. And that's why your seed matters. Now as I conclude, hear, hear this key word. I said, life is a seed. Right? Yes. So life is a seed. Take this prophetic word. No matter how little your seed is today, it shall become great tomorrow. Yeah. When you despise your seed today, you are despising your future. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. When you despise your little seed today, you have despised your future. What guarantees your future is your seed today. So preserve it. Don't look down on your seed. 
that job you are doing, don't look down on it. You say, this general, I'm tired of that job. I'm looking. Before you look for another one, do this one well. Uh, do it well, do it right. So you carry the same attitude to the new one. I say, oh, every job she goes into, she is doing it excellently well. It's a seed you are sowing. Somebody is going to talk to it, talk about it tomorrow. I say, that lady, if you employ her, man, you, you are best of hands there. Yeah. I said to you this morning, when you see anybody with great results, a wise man, don't look, don't admire the results, admire the seed. There's something the guy sold that gave him that result. If you are wise enough, ask him, sir, how did you get to this level? Don't just say, I can't go for your life for this. That's all we have our story. Everything, oh, I can't go for it. I like God the way things is working for you. If don't end there, ask him. How did you make it to this point? Can you just open my eyes to see? I like what I'm seeing. But you need to know what is so that got him there. Don't desire it alone. Learn what the seed was. Every great thing begins with a seed. You see somebody with a big house, it is seed. He sold the seed for the big house. He didn't get it overnight. Somebody with a big car. Big car. Big American truck. Big one. With terrific nose. That harasses demons. The first car I got in my life was a gift. A gallant car. Mitsubishi. I was driving it to church Sunday morning. I put on the light. It is not automatic car that when you turn on the, the light comes up. In all those garages of those days, I turned off the light. If there was no AC in the car, no air condition, I wind up the glasses, pretending as if there, there's AC in the car. When people were trying to greet me, I would just wave my hand. I was suffocating in the car, but I have to. I'm saying I have a right. I, you don't know. But, uh, I was sweating, but I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this way. Your seal will increase. No matter how little you just put some value on that seed, it will become great tomorrow. Yeah. So keep your seed alive. And I want to say these two things or three things that I will pray. There are different kinds of seed. Are you listening to me? We have human seed. Mention that. We have animal seed. The one we want to end with this morning is word seed. Somebody say word seed. Word seed. Do you know everything that God created? He created by the words of his mouth. Yes. You create your word with your word. By your word. So control what you say with your mouth this year. It's what you say that you'll get. Your words are seeds. Stop saying, I'm tired of my life. No more. Say, I'm enjoying my life. Stop saying, poor me. Say, bless me. Reach me. Stop saying negative things to yourself. They are seeds. They are more powerful than the prayer you are praying. Amen. Hey, 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 hey. Is somebody hear me? The things you say every day, they are more powerful than the prayer you never have to pray in five minutes. Because you say them more often than the time you pray. The quality of time you invest in, in saying negative things to your life and children and business is more than the time you spend in praying to reverse it. Do you know that? So learn to say things right. I am blessed. I am a rich man. Like everywhere I go, I tell my wife, I'm a rich pastor. When we go to a store, my wife wants to say, ah, it's a store. I say, you don't know who is here beside you. He's a rich man. Spend it. <laughs> he's, ah, he's a, I say, spend it. You know, we are rich people. Don't, don't look at him. Just buy it. Don't look for clearance. Buy it. 
<laughs> if you like it, do what? Buy it. <laughs> Just position yourself. I am blessed. Just walk with that understanding. People who are buying it, they didn't have two heads. No. Are you listening to me, somebody? Yes. The person riding the car you love, he didn't have two heads. It came the way you came to this world. Yes. You can also buy what he bought. Yes. You can buy what he has. Yes. You can even buy it over from him. In those days, as a young pastor, I didn't have a car, not even a bicycle. When I see people driving car on the road, I say, you see my drivers on the road, they are driving my car on the road. They are driving. I say, you know, I send this one on the road, this one is coming back later, this one. <laughs> my friends will laugh, say, you foolish boy. You are dreaming, be nothing, nothing. I say, don't worry, the nothing, nothing will become something, something. And we are there. Somebody, I just finished singing, not preaching. I just sang on a Christmas day. And one man walked up to me and said, you, 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 I just love every time you are singing. And you know already that I don't have a voice. I'm not a singer. I'm just a worshiper. <laughs> you know? He said, but every time, you see, I feel something enters into me every time you are singing. He said, can you come to our house? I said, what, what, what am I? I'm a bloody bachelor. I don't have anybody to give me rice on Christmas day. So I went to them. And then I was caught in my Geo's house, my mentor's house, my spiritual father. And we got to that and said, let's see we eat. And then he said, can you pray for us, Pastor Shola? And then we pray. As I was going, he said, do you, do, you, do you have a car? I said, car. <laughs> car. <laughs> you, you are starting from a high level. Oh. I said, no, sir. Do you know how to drive? I said, no, sir. It's okay. I just got this car. And I just packed it and I was thinking what to do. And I just felt like giving it to you. Mm. I said, ah. On a Christmas day, I said, I said, sir, I'm squatting my Jew, sir. He said, it doesn't matter. That time, there was no G no phone set in Nigeria. Yeah. Only rich men have cellular. Yeah. cellular. And then, and then, he said, he saw the way I was panicking. There are some gifts that will come to you. You'll be sweating. Yeah. And let that miracle come to you. Yeah. It is the seed of my service that brought me to that point. He said, yes, each time you are singing, something touches me. And we are better singers in the church. They didn't remember them. But he remember my seed that I've been sowing into his life as a minister. He said, this guy, we give it to that young guy. I said, sir, my, my, my Jew has several cars in his compound. Where will I put that one? Then he said, okay, hold on. He went in, took his cellular, just called, called my Jew. You know, big man to big man, they, they is little. He said, ah, I got a car for your boy, and he said, he doesn't know where to park it. I don't know if, um, what we can do. He said, is it, is, is Shola there? He said, yes. He said, get on top of it. He said, the man spoke in my language. He said, what is wrong with you? Is your, are you okay? Somebody give you a car. You are saying you don't know where to park it. <laughs> Then they drove the car to the house. Okay. And I gave him the key. Sir, this is the car of the key. He said, the key so the, the key of the car. He said, so what do I do? Since I maybe they want to take children to school or whether the driver can use the car. He said, poverty will not kill you. <laughs> he said, this car is your car. He said, how many cars are in this compound? I don't you don't need this one to carry. They have their own. This is your car. Go and learn how to drive. Right. You see, poverty has a way of making you to shake when you say yeah, yes. I prophesy to somebody who says yes, that your blessing is a bigger than your level. Yeah. But it is seed that brought me to that point, not prayer. I wasn't praying for car, but I was sowing a seed into a man's life. I never knew it was touching. I never knew my seed was touching it. But the seed was growing, and when it became full, it delivered the car to me. Amen. Life is governed by seed. If you can preserve your seed this year, especially I said, preserve them with the words of your mouth. Look at your tree and say, You are blessed. You shall be the president in this country. You shall men shall serve you. Don't say this one entity. I don't know where you people came from. You they came from you. <laughs> Do this, I don't know where you came from. They came from here. From you. You came back to them. We should ask you where you get them from. Oh. Are you listening to me? Yes. So bless them. Do not curse them. 
I'm tired of my life. No, say, Lord, my life is fruitful. My life is blessed. I'm not frustrated. Bless yourself. Bless yourself. Position yourself well for the blessing to come. You will pray less this year if you do these things. That, that's why this word is very key for you for the beginning of the new year. You need a seed to become great. Amen. But listen to me. Every man has a seed in him. God has not created a useless man. Someone say, I'm not useless. There's something inside of me. Do you know there's something you can do that is better than, than what I'm, I'm doing right now? Cultivate it. It will blossom. Don't be a late comer to work. It's a seed. You are sowing a seed. The day they will look for who to sack, is who they will be looking for. <laughs> because you will be sowing the seed of lateness. Sowing the seed of lateness. Don't be easily provoked at job. When somebody talk one association, you say, Me, you don't know ah, where I came from. Where did you come from? You came from heaven. Why must you come? Why did you come from? Say, if I go back to my village for you, which village? At this level. That you have been in church for many years. You are still remembering village power. You need deliverance. Calm down. Smile. A lady said to me, he said, since I've been hearing you speak, he said, my life is changing. He said, I got to the bank and they told me I don't have money in my account. He said, if it was before, I would scatter everybody. He said, they checked, they checked, they said, there's no money. I said, what's the job? He said, someone just said, calm down. They're just okay. And then she left. He said, a few minutes, and they, they call her and say, we are sorry. We just checked it. Everything was, it was a mistake. He said, he said, you know, he said, but what shocked me was that I didn't react. He said, me, I know myself. <laughs> I said, let that seed keep growing. It's a seed. Life is what? It's a seed. And God said, whatever you sow, you shall reap if you sow bad words, you read bad. If you sow good words, you read good words. If you sow good character, you read good character. If you sow gossip, people will gossip you die. If you sow seed of gossip or bitterness or hatred, there will be hatred all around. It's automatic. You just know that there's hatred everywhere because you are sowing the seed. Life is a seed. So love, so kindness. Be quick to say, oh, you're looking sweet. You know, since I came to America, I, I find it difficult to, to compliment people. In Africa, where I came from, I say, that, oh, wonderful sister, you're looking great. But in America, you have to be careful because you don't know. You say you are wonderful, they say, oh, he, he, he's, he's thinking of me. I'm not thinking of you. I'm only helping you to. Help me. Look at you and say, you are wonderful, you are wonderful. You look at say, I'm so this, but you are wonderful. Look at say, look at his eyes. Say, neighbor, you are wonderful. Don't be afraid. You know the system has made you to be afraid to even sow seed of good word to people. The system is so corrupt that you cannot even say good things to somebody. Otherwise, they will take it from you. Where where I came from, you all people, I can walk and say, wonderful, my sister. You are my sister. Yeah, you want to also say, can I touch you? <laughs> Why should I ask you if you are my sister? If you are, if you are from one family, we are of the same body from Christ. We are one. Are you listening to me? Are we not one? We should be able to show kindness, kindness, oneness to ourselves. Is a seed. The woman said to me in Africa, I said, in this church there is no love. I said, no, it is you that didn't come with love. Yes. <laughs> How did you know there is no love? It is your heart that tells you so. People love themselves. It is you that didn't find who to love. So you look for somebody to love, and then if you don't love yourself, you can't love any other person. No way. No way. So go to 550 people right now as I'm speaking, and shake their hands and, 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 shake their and say, I love you with the love of Christ. I love you with the love of Christ. I love you. 520 people, they are, they are all around you. If you can't see them, then I, I need to pray for you. Say, I love you, you are my brother. You are wonderfully made, you are beautifully made.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say you are my sister, you are my brother, I love you by fire. I love you by fire. I love you by fire. Hallelujah. Come and give Jesus a round of applause. Come and give him, give him a round of applause. He's worthy. 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 Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Are you ready for impartation now? Anyhow you look, anyhow you dress, you are just wonderful. Amen. And there are three kinds of people on hearts. The wonderful, the beautiful, and the fearful. I am wonderfully, beautifully, and fearfully made. Any class you find yourself, you are okay. There are some people, they are fearfully made. When, when you see them, you... You can't mess around them. Mm -hmm. The likes of Daniel. Mm -hmm. The likes of Moses. The likes of Elijah. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are fearfully made. Highly anointed. Highly concentrated. And from today, demons will be afraid of you. Amen. There are people who are wonderfully made. They know how to do wonders. Their life is a wonder. Mm -hmm. Their children is a wonder. And that will be your testimony. Amen. There are those who are beautifully made. Everything about their life and around them is beautiful. That is somebody's testimony this year. Are you listening to me? Yes. Just know that you are wonderfully beautiful and fearfully made. So let no devil intimidate you or destroy your seed. Amen. Your seed for greatness is inside of you. Stand up on your feet. Amen. If you want to clap for Jesus, go ahead and clap for him. If you are blessed, if you are blessed and blessed and blessed, you can hit it better and louder. Now, listen to me. I want you to pray this prayer. Lord, cause me to recognize my seed. Because your greatness depends on it. If you do Mr. Jack's job. Your life will be Jackie Jackie. But if you do what is destined for you, your life, the journey of your life will be smooth. People struggle when they are where they should not be. A man said to me yesterday, he said, I came to inquire of the Lord. Should I stay in America? Or go back to America, to Nigeria. I've been here for several years. He said, but I don't know why I'm here. Mm. And I said, okay. He said, that is why I came. Just tell me if I'm to stay here or to go back. And then I, I opened the mirror. <laughs> and then we search. And we told him what he should do. And he said, what you just told me, my spiritual father in Nigeria told me this several times. Say he has been saying it, but I didn't obey him. Mm. Now that was his seed for greatness, but he has been disobeying and despising it. Say what you just said, they've been telling me. I said, so what are you waiting for? Go and do it. That's it. You are the reason why the devil is beating you down. Go and do what you have been told. That is your life. Many of us, we have been told what to do. We are still looking for eternity. That's the reason why we are where we are. Right. You have asked three, five, ten prophets. They have told you the same thing. You are still asking another one. Are you not tired of asking and asking and asking? Go and do what you need to do. Do the needful so that it can be settled. Stop looking for your enemies. You don't need your, to know it's like a, you, but prophet, 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 I want to know who are my enemies. And you don't need to know your enemies. Know what you need to do with your life. Amen. Enemies will leave you alone. Amen. When you are going on, can they reach you again? No. Where, where do, do enemies stay? It's down. No. Where do great people stay? Up. Oh, you will grow up this year. Amen. They won't be able to get to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
If you say the Lord has ever received it. Amen. If there's any man that has enemy, I'm number one. My enemies are so many. So many. Numerous. They are legion. But listen to me. I'm going somewhere. And I'm still going up. Amen. They are unable to stop me. They have tried many times. They can't stop this guy. They can't stop me. I'm only waiting for a day that we shall call all the enemies together. <laughs> and and I will tell my mother she knows how to cook very well. We shall cook bread and tea for them. <laughs> we, we, we will not be able to host them. We will do it on the streets. Yeah. Where everybody can come and see you. Yeah. And we just come and eat and go. Come and eat and go. Come and eat. The good one will eat. The bad one will as the battle is eating, you say, You see, that one is one of my enemies. You see, that one is one of my enemies. Let him eat and go. They will eat and go. I yeah. say, He set the table before you in the presence of your enemies. He says, So you don't have to walk. If you want all enemies to die, who will be, will be come on the day your table is set? You need your enemies to see the day you are eating Pandedia. You need them to be around the day you are riding your best car. You need them to be around the day you are building a new house. Don't let all of them die, yo. Are you listening to me? You need them to see you going up this year. And you are going up. You are going up. You are going up. You are going up. Receive this impartation. In the name of Jesus. 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 Amen. So that prayer, Lord, open my eyes to see my seed. Turn it to prayer. The oil is coming on you. Oh, my God. Come on, I shut up. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, open my eyes, open my eyes.